Welcome to another Photoshop video. This time we will be editing an image from the Northern Lights in Norway. So let's go. I spent the last week traveling through the northern parts of Norway and I got lucky with some Northern Lights here. So let's try to enchant this shot. If you want to follow along, you can find the raw file in the description. And you can see I'm starting this in the camera raw editor for the basic raw adjustments. And honestly, that's pretty much all I need for this shot. First off, I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will help to reduce this heavy green color cast a little bit, as you can see, taking out some saturation. Now in the basic tab, I want to further continue reducing the screen color cast by adjusting the white balance. That means I'm simply going to drop the temperature so we get some more blue tones in here and make it look a bit more natural since it's not that green at all. And we can further reduce the green tones by increasing the tint. Let's see, I don't want to lose too much green, but just a bit. I think that's a good spot right there. All right, then looking at the histogram, we can see it's actually quite nicely exposed for a nighttime shot. I still want to bring up the exposure slightly, making the whole image a little brighter and fixing the underexposure. Then the northern lights in this case were way too bright and almost overexposed this part. I can, however, bring back details by simply bringing down the highlights and I want to bring them down all the way so we can see all the nice structure in those northern lights. Awesome. Then. For a little more contrast, I'm going to drop the shadows. I'm being very careful here to not underexpose anything. There is a little bit of underexposure, but I'm going to fix that by increasing the blacks. Just like that. And at this point, we can add a little bit of overall contrast as well. Giving this image some more punch. This is looking very, very good. Let's compare to before. You can see we do have more details in the Aurora and we do have way more blue color tones making this whole image look more realistic. I do want to introduce some texture and some clarity which will greatly help with the northern lights. And finally let's bring up the vibrance and I can even add some saturation for some more color tones. Perfect. Looking Pretty good after those base adjustments. Now let's work with a few local adjustments. First off, I do want to adjust the very near foreground here and therefore I'm just creating a linear gradient somewhere like this. And here I'm going to bring up the highlights and I'm also bringing up the whites. And I think the green tones in here are way too much. So again, I'm using the tint to reduce the color cast. Just like that. All right, looks good. Then next, I do want to work on the sky. Actually, I do want to work on the northern lights some more. And therefore I'm using another linear gradient from the top down like this. And again, let's bring up the texture. And let's increase the clarity again. You can see the clarity works really, really good, but you still need to be careful to not overdo it here. Otherwise it looks very strange, very fast. So this should be good enough. Then I do want to adjust the dark part of the sky. Therefore I'm using a luminance range mask. And since I only want to target the dark parts, I'm going to drop the luminance range bringing it down so the northern lights aren't affected at all. And the overlay really helps to get this mask in a good spot, just like this. I do, however, want to make the selection a little softer, so I'm going to drag this slider a little to the right. And of course, I don't want to change the foreground, so I'm going to subtract a linear gradient from this luminance range mask, just like that. With this selection done, I'm going to drop the blacks and I'm also going to drop the temperature, giving the sky more of a blue color tone. So this is looking really, really good. And that's it for the local adjustments. Again, let's compare to before. 
We have much nicer colors going on. I do think I need to adjust the dark parts of the sky some more. I actually think I don't need to drop the blacks. I don't want to make it too dark up there. I could maybe even increase the blacks a little bit. Let's try it like that. And let's further bring down the temperature. Okay. So that's it for the local adjustments. Let's continue doing just a little bit of color grading. That means I'm skipping over the color mixer because we don't need to change anything here. But I do want to apply a little bit of split toning in the color grading tab. First off, let's work on the highlights. So usually for sunsets, I'm going with warm color tones like red, orange or yellow. In this case, our highlights in this image are naturally green. That means I'm going to enhance that by adding some green tones to the highlights. Let's see, I can further increase the hue. It's looking like a nice green tone. For the saturation, I don't want to overdo it. I just want to have a minimal amount here. So I'm going with this. For the shadows, a blue tone works really, really good for those nightscape images. And it just works well with the green tones overall. So let's search for a fitting blue color. I think that's a good hue. I just want to bring down the saturation again. Let's start from zero and go a little further up here. All right, I think that's looking good. Very subtle, but very effective. All right, then the last part of the color grading is happening in the calibration tab. Yeah, I just want to play around with the sliders a bit and see if I can enchance that green tone up in the sky somewhere. In this case, that means I'm going to drop the blue primary hue very, very carefully again. And I also want to drop the green primary hue. And you can see this will make the green tones in the northern lights more intense. So this is looking really, really good. Then we can sharpen this image a little bit, I guess. But I don't think we need much sharpening in here. And that's also it for the raw adjustments. Now let's open this shot up in Photoshop to see if we can further adjust this image. Okay, right away I don't like how this image is lacking some brightness, especially further down in the foreground. For this reason I'm using a new layer and let's switch the blending mode to overlay. To make the bottom part brighter I'm going to use the TK panel plugin. Here I'm creating a luminosity mask just to target the highlights in the foreground. This means I'm going to hit the lights one button right there. And you can see this is creating a nice mask for all the highlights in the image. So I'm going to add this one as a layer mask on our new layer. Then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B. I'm also dropping the brush opacity up there in the brush menu. Let's bring it down quite a bit, just like that. And of course, to make things brighter on an overlay layer, I'm going to use white as my foreground color for the brush. And now I'm just carefully brushing over the foreground first. And you can see how it will get slightly brighter each, each time I'm brushing over it. Of course, without affecting the shadows. <clears throat> we could even try and dodge the aurora a little bit. I just need to be careful to not make the bright parts too overexposed in here, but this is looking good. Let's deactivate this dodging layer so you can see the difference. And we get a much, much brighter image. Nice. Then I am going to merge those layers and then I do want to fix those footsteps in the foreground. We don't want them in here. So I'm using the clone stamp tool and just copy an area next to it and brush over those footsteps. All right, maybe we can do the same with the vignetting, which is a little dark in the corner down there. And I guess here we have the finished image. So I hope this Northern Lights edit was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video. And I just noticed I actually captured a shooting star in here. That's insane. Oh my God, I think I need to enchant this some more. Okay. Let me try something. I want to create a new layer and switch the blending mode to hard light. Then I'm grabbing the brush again by pressing B, bring down the opacity even further. 
Let's scale down the brush size. And let's just add a little bit of glow on this shooting star. Right at the right part. I just want to make it a little more visible since that's really, really lucky. And I'm playing around with the opacity of this layer because I don't want to make it look strange. That's good enough. So that's really it for editing this shot. I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.